Hi guys, how are you today? We are here with another My Muse video for my creative year. And I don't know what to tell you, except that if you follow me on social media, you already know My Muse is screaming at me to get back into my watercolor, um, doing, back to doing my daily drawings and painting eyeballs. Why eyeballs? I, know, I have no idea. I don't know. Um, but again, if you've been following me on social media, you've seen this little um, journal. Um, it's a pentallic watercolor journal. And I started painting eyeballs, like literally I wasn't getting eyeballs. Um, what I first did was I started collecting eyeballs from friends and family. I have pictures of eyeballs, not the actual eyeball. And um, I actually paint from a digital copy of the photo, usually on my phone or iPad. Um, but in the back of this journal is going to be these little printouts of, of set eyeballs. Some I've painted, some I haven't done yet. And on the back it actually says the person's name who's eyeball this happens to be and um, someday when somebody is looking at the journal it will be an interesting game to see if they can pick out whose eyeball is whose from this stack um, in the journal but I'm having fun painting the different ones and you wouldn't think that there would be that much different between them because how different can an eyeball be but they're actually very different um, and I'm having a lot of fun doing them I intended to do them all this way in more of a traditional manner or this way. Um, but then as I was started working in the journal, I was reminded by some social media posts of an artist, Debbie Weir, and she does these sort of doodly um, semi-abstracted faces and things. And I love her work. Um, so I thought, you know, I'm gonna paint what, the one eyeball more traditionally, and then I'm gonna do one Debbie Weir style. And so I'm continuing to do that throughout the book. I do the one person traditionally, and then I do their eyeball, crazy. Traditional, crazy. Traditional, crazy. So I am up to this one that I did. So tonight, later tonight, I've got to paint her crazy. Um, so it's fun focusing on a particular thing, whether it's a body part like eyeballs um, or it's um, flowers or limiting your focus or limiting your materials and then seeing what you can do with that. That's a lot of fun and I find it challenging. I find it interesting and definitely my muse is screaming at me to keep doing that for a while. So I'm going to. Um, I have this small journal with a couple clips to keep it open and then my art toolkit um, watercolor kit, which is normally in my travel art case. Um, but I've been take it's easy for me to take downstairs. So um, I have to replace this. You're gonna say, what the heck is that? It's a piece of a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. It is really great for lifting up your watercolor paint if you get too much in the wrong spot or you get too much water on there and it gets to be too, dri too drippy. Um, so um, that is a really good thing to use. And though there will be, I've been asked about eyeball tutorials. We will be doing that. Um, I think later in the month, I'm not going to do it for the My Muse video because it'd be too long of a video, but um, definitely I think that we'll be doing that. But if you already are playing with watercolors and you have a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser in your stash, cut a little piece off and practice lifting your paint up with it because it really does work really well. So I usually have a piece in my case. We've got to replace it because this one's past it. Um, I have a... Um, some kind of spray bottle. This is actually from a um, screen protection thing for my laptop. Uh, I take that back. I think it's for my old Kindle. Um, but it's the same size as the Mini Mister by um, Ranger, so that would work too. I always have a piece of paper, while I'm at least doing the eyeballs, a piece of test paper to test the paint colors on when I'm mixing them in the watercolor palette. Um, I need something this works for me to have a little scrap of paper in here, so I do. I have my travel watercolor palette, which is a small pan, um, and I've taken the insert out that's supposed to fit the watercolor pans so that I can get more colors in here. These are mostly koi, but there are a few Daniel Smith colors in here. Um, yeah, that's the only two brands that are in here, koi and Daniel Smith, and this actually, this. This um, selection of colors works really well for me, not only for the eyeballs, but when I'm traveling, this is a selection of colors that I work 
uh, that I use that work for me really well. There is a tiny travel Winsor Newton paintbrush here. I don't use it that often, but when I am working and I need a small, something with a small tip, this is actually a really great brush. Oops, I do not have my reading glasses on. So that just fits right there. And there's a sponge there I can wipe the brushes off on. Mostly it's just filler to hold things in place. You could use any bag for this. I happen to have this art toolkit bag, but there's a lot of bags out there. Um, I have um, a couple different black pens, one that's water soluble, one that's not. This is a Sharpie pen. This is a Pilot Varsity um, fountain pen in black, a black paint pen, a white Uniball Signo pen. Actually, a couple of small brushes that don't need to be in here because I haven't been using them, so we're gonna actually take those out. There is a ruler for a straight edge, a couple of extra binder clips, and a piece of a gift card um, to scratch in the paint. And these mini binder clips, I really just use to hold that in place. Um, underneath here, I have um, a rag, some wax paper. Um, this, If you have to close your book and things are still wet, this would come in handy. A kneadable eraser to erase a pencil, should I decide to do that, which I don't often. This is an extra piece of wax paper. Um, a piece of plastic wrap. Now, um, one of the techniques that you can do in um, watercolor that we'll discuss at a later date, but and I've shown before, is when your watercolor paint is wet and really juicy, scrunch up a piece of plastic wrap in and stick it onto the page and push it, push it down, wrinkles it all, and let it dry. Just let it dry naturally. When it is dry, pull this off and it's gonna leave an interesting pattern in your paint. I also have some salt for the same reason. While the paint is wet, you can drop the salt in there and just let it dry naturally. And when it's done, shake the salt off, rub the salt off, and it'll leave an interesting pattern. Um, and then of course the kneadable eraser in case I wanna erase something. Um, pencil sharpener, a couple of Koi water brushes. I love these. They're easy, they're portable. This is the larger one, which is, I believe, 8.8 uh, .8 ounce. And the smaller one, I think, is 0.4. Um, I have a uh, large brush tip and a fine, and the fine here, I believe. Yeah, large and fine, I believe. So these are nice because they actually are meant to travel with. So the base, which has the water in it, comes with this black stopper you can fill this with water put the stopper in it i've taken this a, a lot of different places on planes all over the place it doesn't leak i've I, at least i haven't had a problem with it yet and then the top separately so i have the two bottoms and then the tops and then i have a selection of uh, mini colored pencils i have this is just a regular 2b pencil you see where that's from i i when i see these i usually pick them up um, I have a short Stabilo All pencil if I want something that's water soluble and really dark. I have a white crayon if I, before I start painting, I wanna leave an area that's white um, and I don't wanna you know, get paint there, I'll put some crayon on that and this'll keep it uh, from getting water uh, paint on that section of the paper. Um, I also have a ballpoint pen in here and some um, mini kids colored pencils. So. My muse has been screaming at me. She really wants me to keep up with the watercoloring to use limited supplies right now. So that's what we're gonna do. I would love to see all of you do the same. Work with limited supplies. Um, challenge yourself to do something different. Um, I, I, it could be anything. I have done challenges like this where I've challenged myself to do 12 little quick paintings in 10 minutes. And did they all come out good? No. Was it fun? Yes. It's not always about the quality of work. It's about just having fun with the process and getting re-inspired. Right now, this is really inspiring for me. And it's a little bit bulky, but it's not too bulky for me to take somewhere if I need to and I feel like we're gonna be out somewhere that I wanna take this to go painting. Um, so think about how you can challenge yourself and look up Debbie Weir. She's really inspiring to me right now. I did order her book. It's on the way. I can't wait till it comes in. She has one on Amazon. I'll put it in the description below. But if you have something right now that's really inspiring you, I would love to hear about it. So either leave something in the comments below or if you're a member of the My Creative Year Facebook group, we would sure love to hear about it over there. So please share. Um, let's keep the group over in the face in Facebook um, 
a kind, supportive group. That's what we're all about, sharing freely and being supportive. So let's keep it that way. And um, yeah, let's share what our muses are saying right now. Uh, the most important thing, of course, besides like, share, and subscribe, if you will, I would sure appreciate that, is please go out and have a great day. Listen to your muse. She won't steer you wrong, not normally. And do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.